Hi everyone, this is Viktor Narditsky from Vantic, and uh, in the next few minutes I will go over Vantic's machine learning platform and we'll go from a problem statement to an experiment that uh, uh, lets you identify some models that could be a good solution for this problem. The problem we'll be looking at is uh, forecasting trading volume in the next 10 minutes. Uh, we'll be looking at US equities and the graph here shows you 10 minute uh, volume bars uh, between 9.30 and 4 p.m. There are 39 bars like this. They have this typical U-shape where there is more volume at the beginning and at the end of the day. And our task would be to predict trading volume in the next 10 minutes given any information from the past. So first we're going to define a query that uh, fetches the data that will be used for creating features. In this case uh, we're going to start with one minute bars uh, but most of the power comes in when you have a machine learning case where you'd be using tick by tick data, which uh, uh, which we provide. So uh, we'll take one minute bars initially. We'll aggregate them into ten minute bars. Uh, the volume uh, column will have the value for every ten minutes, and we'll also keep a value of standard deviation of the VWAP from one minute bars. That we can potentially use in as features. Then we can uh, um, make sure core protections don't affect volume, so we can normalize for core protections. And uh, we're going to use uh, this query to define the data for the experiment. So the next step would be to define an experiment. We'll call it uh, volume prediction base. Um, we'll define the range. So this will be half a year between 10th of May and uh, 10th of November and we can specify which symbols I would like to predict volume for. Uh, we could as well specify all of the US equities without having to enumerate symbols one by one. Um, so this is the experiment we are defining and uh, one thing that we need to specify is how we split the data. Uh, we're going to specify validation and test ranges. We're not going to use the validation range until later on, but we'll specify it here for consistency. And the uh, validation range is the next to last month, and test range is the last month of the time range we defined here. Our data feed is given by the query that we constructed above, this bars query. And um, then we'll define a pipeline that takes the input um, from the bars query and creates features out of it. In this case, we'll use a built-in calc lags operator that creates lagged values of the field that we care about, volume in this case. And um, if it's 10 a.m. now, then uh, uh, the value of lag one would be the volume from 9.50 until 10. And the value of lag 21 would be the value of volume on the previous trading day between 10 o'clock and 10 past 10. And we are trying to predict volume between 10 o'clock and 10 past 10 today, so in the next 10 minutes. Um, our target will be volume, and our features would be those five lagged values 1, 2, 3, 39, and 40. Uh, we'll use just a single model light GBM with the default parameters as a starting point. And uh, we'll specify the metrics that we care about, symmetric mean absolute percentage error, uh, mean absolute error, RMSE, and R squared. Next, let's run the experiment. It takes two lines. You define the experiment by instantiating uh, what we just described in this class. And uh, you call that run method on it, and it returns us the values. Um, let's just remember the first one. <clears throat> This is the SMAPE value, and we'll be comparing other experiments to it. We could also look at it symbol by symbol by calculating metrics for each symbol, and it gives us a breakdown by symbol. Next, let's take a look at how we could create um, features. First, uh, we'll define a set of candidate features, and we'll uh, modify the query to get those features. And we do that by specifying a longer pipeline that operates on the original query that just got us barred data. But now it's also, uh, it will also get us the value of um, the VWAP for the prices from the previous interval. As before, it will get us the lagged values of the volume. Now it will also get us the 
value of the, the identifier of the current bucket. So that could be 930, 940, and so on, until 1550. And we'll also add um, the identifier of the ticker, like Apple, Microsoft. And uh, uh, now we're going to try including various combinations of these features into the experiment and compare the results. Uh, doing that is super easy. Uh, we're just specifying which, which features we want, and the rest is inherited from the volume prediction experiment we looked at just a second ago. So now we're saying, let's take all of the values from that experiment. Let's only include the features that have all of the legs, and uh, now we are going to look at the VWAP of the price from the last 10 minutes. And uh, let's run, let's call this experiment VWAP. Since we added VWAP to the lag values, let's run it. And let's take a look at the metrics. Uh, this MAP value is 0 0.2140, which is actually slightly, slightly better than what we had before. But let's keep going. Let's now try adding um, the identifier of the time interval and uh, uh, we specify it as the feature to include here. We define a new experiment, we run it, and what we get is now actually a much better value for SMAPE. Now let's give it uh, another try, but also include the ticker. So we add an OID to the set of features and we're getting yet a slightly better SMATE value. Let's now see, maybe we don't need all of the lagged values. Let's try removing some. So instead of including uh, 1, 2, 3, 39, 40, let's just include 1, 2, and 39. And actually the value becomes just slightly worse. So uh, we might choose to include fewer legs because it simplifies the problem, but uh, we might as well keep all five of them since the value seems to be slightly better. So we're going to actually stick to all of the liked values, um, the identifier of the time period and the identifier of the ticker. Uh, and that's going to be our uh, base model going forward. Uh, when we are going to see what preprocessors may improve our results. Um, so this just described that we want the features identified as a good set before. And uh, um, now we'll try different preprocessors. One uh, preprocessor uh, removes outliers from the training set. So whenever a value of either the volume or one of the lagged values is outside of four standard deviations, we remove that, um, sorry, we don't remove that data point. Uh, we cap it at four standard deviations. Uh, and we can look at the results. The results actually are slightly worse. So 0.194 and it was 0.191 before. Um, we're going to try another preprocessor which takes the log of the values. And we could also apply a I mean max scalar or we could apply normalizing by shares outstanding. Um, this, uh, this is something that, that you can try on your own. Uh, so let's take the log of the values and uh, um, that's done by saying now our preprocessor is applied log to the volume and the leg columns. And actually we get a better value. We get uh, 0.189. So we'll stick to taking the logs. Um, now we'll show you how to combine what we've done so far uh, as well as a, try different models and tune hyperparameters for them. So we're going to uh, start with the best uh, pipeline so far, so with the best set of features, uh, which is lags, identifier of the time period, identifier of the symbol, uh, and the best preprocessor, which is taken log, the log of um, the volume and volume lag features. Then we're going to look at several models. We're going to look at uh, LightGBM, and now we're going to tune hyperparameters. So we'll do a grid search on the ranges we specified here. We'll also take a look at uh, XGB, uh, XGBoost, and CatBoost, uh, each tuning their own hyperparameters. 
and uh, we go going to actually do cross-validation and now this is where the validation set will become useful so we're going to split the data into five folds and we're going to do a walk forward validation with an expanding window uh, when we run this experiment uh, now we go instead of just calling that run method we're going to take it step by step um, so this will uh, get all of the data all of the features and then call the init fit on the underlying models and then at this stage we can see the results of cross validation uh, so they appear here sorted by uh, the eval metric and um, <clears throat> you can see that there would be a value for each of the five folds uh, we'll get the value uh, of the metric and at the end we get the mean score which is used to uh, to rank the models next we can call the predict method that is applying the best model which corresponds to the first line here so that's cat boost of his max depth three and uh, uh, that gives us the predictions and we can compute uh, metrics on this uh, for this model so th these are the metrics um, something that's very important to do when dealing with time series in particular is to compare it to a simple benchmark so we implemented we have a standard benchmark implemented out of the box which is using the last value as the prediction for the next value and we can um, look at the metrics of that benchmark by calling this calc baseline method and we can see that actually we did slightly well we did quite a bit better when we looked at the fine at the tuned model than just looking at the baseline so hopefully this gives you a sense of what is possible uh, much more is possible uh, we support training on the cluster uh, most of the power comes in when you work with tick by tick data uh, and we support uh, model retraining and model serving please let us know if you have any questions thank you